so next up, of course, the panel discussion uh, will be on challenges in uh, diversifying and modernization initiatives for public and private systems. We have uh, the modern moderator of the panel, uh, engineer Muhammad Hamid, uh, who is the chief technology officer for uh, the Ceramica Platino Group from uh, Aziz El Salab Limited. Uh, engineer Muhammad. With you, hello. Hello everyone. Yes, Mr. Mohammed, thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Engineer Mohammed will be the moderator of the panel alongside with his panelists. Uh, the stage is yours, uh, Mr. Engineer Mohammed. Thank you. Welcome all attendees and the speaker panelists at the Quit Hyper Cloud and Data Center. My name is Mohammed Hamid. I'm a Chief Technology Officer for Platinum Group at Egypt. My experience was C-level uh, technology consulting for experience was uh, 23 years in cybersecurity and information technology and computer science. Let me welcome our expert panelists, Mrs. Laila, and uh, this is uh, information security from my Minister of Higher Education, Mr. Mark, Chief Technology Officer at Shaya Retail Group, also Mr. Darmajit, Director, Global Technology and Operation at MH Shaya Campbell. Let's welcome to all. We will be started with uh, Ms. Laila. Hello. Thank you, Mohamed. Yes, welcome to all. Thank you. Thank you for all. Ms. Laila. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me in this uh, summit. Uh, welcome, Mr. Mohammed. Nice to meet you all. Uh, let us start yeah. with you, Ms. Laila. What is the challenge and rewards of modernized data center? Uh, that's very good questions. Uh, let me answer this question. Uh, nowadays, the concept of a uh, hybrid clouds is constantly being discussed as private as well the public clouds. For uh, large companies, we can see that an state institution, the hybrid solutions, is the only way to get involved in innovation in cloud computing, uh, because most of the data most of the data of the companies must be placed on premises hardware and cannot be moved to public cloud. There are many challenges uh, there, even if there is no legal restriction within the hybrid scenarios. Then the companies are afraid of information leakage or other constraints that may arise when they do not have their data under their control. On the other hand, it's very tempting to take advantage of outplacement infrastructure, which is uh, when the user does not need to worry about or to use the services in the field of machine learning or uh, business intelligence or stream analytics or any other SaaS uh, infrastructure. Uh, this migration can be to the cloud solutions or using the cloud features is mainly from the cost saving point of the view of very desirable solutions. However, the public cloud solutions face many problems with func functionalities of same cloud, uh, which cannot be used combination with local on-premises servers. Now, many, we see here in uh, our ministry, many researchers that have been carried out recently are focusing in the area of uh, private or public clouds. Now we'll focus in the security within the hybrid clouds for large companies and the government here in Oman. It deals with the exploration of uh, various kinds of security within the concept of uh, IS or uh, SAS. Various principles of authentication and security are also challenges in terms of security in this area. Now, when we compare several uh, suppliers that are specialized in hyper cloud solutions for government agencies, some of them are already providing cloud services with focus on the public sector, and it's therefore appropriate to summarize uh, these efforts and compare it with the emphasis of safety. 
So uh, nowadays, the concept of hybrid cloud is constantly being discussed, private as well as the public clouds. For large companies, the states of the uh, hybrid cloud solution are the only way to get involved innovation in the cloud because most of data must be placed on premise hardware and cannot be moved to public. That's the most challenges we are facing in the cloud computing. Great. Mr. Mark, and uh, what's your opinion? And the uh, same question, what's the challenge and the rewards of modernized data center? Hello. Well, I think uh, Lila has uh, touched on a lot of important points already. Uh, of course, we're in a slightly different line of business. So in, in, um, from my perspective, let's start with the customer. So our customers in the shopping malls, in the stores, but also online, increasingly want instant gratification. They want a personalized experience. They want recommendations uh, increasingly in real time. All of this requires us to process large amounts of data much faster than we've ever done before. So, so that is the ask of us as an IT department. Also the retail business is, is peaky, right? So we have Black Friday, Cyber Monday. It's not a steady flow. It goes constantly up and down. So we need to have the scalability. Um, all of this together, combined with the fact that we come from a somewhat fragmented situation today, where we still have a lot of on-prem, we are in various different clouds with our suppliers. Uh, we are also increasingly in the public cloud. So our current challenge, and Dharmajit can speak to it, uh, he works uh, with me on the same challenge. Uh, our current challenge is to, to kind of streamline it a little bit to make sure that we stay cost efficient, um, but also that we enable the business uh, with all this processing and all this storage and compute that we need uh, moving forward increasingly. So. Um, of course, on top, all the topics that uh, Ms. Lila has, has mentioned, security, uh, data, uh, uh, data requirements, et cetera, also apply to us with our customer data. So that is basically uh, the, the, the landscape that we have in front of us in terms of uh, challenges. Perfect. Perfect, Mr. Mark. Mr. Darmajit, I trust your opinion. Thank you, Mohamed uh, and Mark uh, and Lila alluded to the key points, just uh, one or two things I wanted to add from my side, as Mark alluded as well. Being a retailer, right, for us, uh, it is the customer first and last. And, and therefore, to us, uh, aspects such as data center modernization and the hybrid cloud have become an imperative. I mean, there's no two things, there's no choice about it. We've got to be there right in front We've got to be there with the technologies that our customers are demanding on the go, closer to the edge, anywhere, anytime. Now that places a significant demand, and if I can speak just from the technology viewpoint for a bit, uh, working with Mark, we've been uh, putting in place the digital transformation journey for Alcha from an IT perspective, and one of the key uh, most important anchor points of this digital transformation in order for us to be a more omnichannel retailer is data center modernization. We are right now in the middle of a very exciting data center modernization along with a hybrid cloud project. And uh, about halfway through it, some of the significant challenges that I can yeah, relate to, apart from security, uh, uh, which I had also mentioned, one of the things we, we find is the aspect of uh, when we've got a significant amount of legacy, a large number of applications uh, that we uh, have built up over the years, it carries considerable competitive advantage uh, for us as a business. How do we uh, how do we refactor? How do we rehost them? And how do we modernize those applications to take advantage of the modern data center? Because it's a different paradigm. And uh, it's not a very straightforward uh, uh, process of refactoring, rehosting, and replatforming application portfolios in a consistent way across to the new modernized data center. This is one challenge uh, to, to speak of. And we've had instances, for example, where uh, older applications were designed with older uh, design uh, uh, principles and had to be refactored carefully you know, in terms of taking advantage have had to be uh, redesigned with microservices and a service-oriented architecture 
have had to be broken from big monolithic applications to an app-centric view. Yeah? So it is a design challenge. That's what I want to call out one. And secondly, it's a complex change. I mean, by no means is it a simple aspect of just modernizing the data center. After all, we're dealing with applications that are the lifeblood of our business. And uh, this change demands with it to be non-disruptive. It demands a seamless uh, uh, transition uh, with all of the technical and application related challenges. It's a complex and expensive change. So I just call these two as uh, challenges from a data center modernization perspective. Thank you. Perfect, more than helpful. Uh, back to you, Mr. Mark, uh, what's the key challenge in hypercloud data management? Oh, um, so, so that, there's a number of challenges. I think uh, Dharma and Lila have both already spoken about it a little bit. Maybe to pick to pick out um, to pick out one specific thing that is bugging us and bugging me at the moment. So we have signed over the past few years uh, a number of contracts with uh, solution providers who host solutions in their clouds. Their clouds is typically then also again on AWS or on Azure underneath. Um, these contracts, they are all slightly different. Um, they're sometimes complex. Uh, on top of that, Dharmajit is doing his, his migration of what we have on-prem to the cloud where possible. Some stuff will stay on-prem for reasons that uh, Ms. Laila also pointed out. Um, but altogether that creates quite a difficult uh, situation, I would say different contracts, different support models. Some of it is software as a service, some of it is platform as a service. Um, uh, so, so it's not always easy to establish what we have to do on our side in terms of our support organization, Dharma's organization, but also other, other parts of IT versus what the suppliers have to do, uh, the, the hosting partners or even the solution providers. So that is, we're in the middle of, we're in the middle of trying to sort that out, streamline it a little bit. Um, because it's a, it's it's difficult to support the business properly that way because you get a bit of ping ponging sometimes when issues happen between Alshaya IT and and one or more of the solution providers or hosting partners because sometimes it's not always uh, immediately clear where an issue uh, is is coming from. Um, but also it's it's very easy to waste money this way, right? So we have overlapping contracts. We are building up capabilities, the hosting partners capabilities. So those are some of the things with Dharma and with a few other people in IT we're at the moment trying to address after we made the first steps into the cloud over the past few years relatively quickly. Great. Uh, Mr. Dajmajit, uh, what is the key challenge uh, in hyper the cloud data management? From a uh, <clears throat> Uh, data perspective, uh, one of the things that we have, uh, again, slightly from a more technology uh, focus, what we found right away is the challenge of managing your data, because you no longer have everything in one place in the one room. Uh, you are spread across, in our case, more than five or six, uh, you know, platforms uh, across uh, the hybrid cloud landscape including uh, our own on-premise modernized data center, our cloud offering, private cloud, as well as public cloud providers. And as Mark uh, mentioned as well, we uh, uh, are able to consume significant amount of services from a software as a service standpoint that also reside in their own clouds. Now, one of the challenges is data because data is no longer, as I said, in one place. So keeping track of it, where is it? How do I get one unified view is a challenge. And also to, to support uh, this data challenge, you need to have very robust integration technologies to allow you to span your business process across multiple clouds in a seamless and uh, predictable manner. Yeah? So as a retail organization, for example, certain of our business processes can be uh, you know, provided as software as a service and it then can migrate over or transition over to our own on-premise offering, which has more, uh, you know, uh, competitive IP related enrichment that builds yes. on top of those business processes and helps us do very good just-in-time replenishment, for example, right? How do you consistently manage data flow across all of these disparate cloud offerings? How are you able to operationally monitor 
reconcile, manage, and be able to understand and work with your data has been a significant challenge that uh, you know has uh, come up. Uh, we've been uh, looking at various tools and governance frameworks uh, to bring it together through a process of uh, consistent interfaces uh, and contracts, uh, uh, levels of service, uh, uh, and the levels of predictable outcomes, et cetera. But it is still, it stays, uh, you know, the top uh, challenge, apart from security, of course, of this data and the data privacy that goes with it, which again is, you know, so it's, it's almost like uh, you, you have it all in all these different offerings. At the same time, you have to work with less, quote unquote, control. So how can you still bring in the governance and the reassurance? I think it's the challenge that I wanted to just highlight. Good, great. Back to you, Mr. Mark. Uh, what is the highest priority you work on after this COVID year to respond to new business challenge which have mega passed? So, <clears throat> what, what has happened last year is uh, we've all been taken by surprise. And, and customer preferences were changing very quickly. Um, and I think the consensus in our management team is that all, uh, most of that is there to stay. I mean, customer preferences changing fast, that, that will stay. So the predictability of, of our customer base has gone down. And I think on the IT, on the IT side, we need to have an architecture and a, and a landscape that is adaptable, that is agile and flexible, that you can adjust. And Dharma was talking earlier about monolithic systems. You know, we all come from the era of big Oracle platforms, big SAP platforms, phenomenal platforms with, with tremendous horsepower, but sometimes lacking this jet, uh, agility and adaptability. So that is why I think our biggest challenge moving forward is to, uh, to really uh, with so service-oriented architectures, Dharma said, with microservices, with an architecture that allows us to scale up, but also to be adaptable to changes that we know today. Uh, we don't know that they will happen in six months. New trends or new customer preferences in six months, in 12 months. We need to have the, the capability to adapt to that quickly. And, uh, and, and I think that's, as, I, as an IT team, uh, one of our key challenges. And maybe combine to that, what I think was a great experience for me personally in, in the COVID year was uh, that the levels of collaboration between various teams was increasing dramatically. Suddenly, a lot of formality, a lot of hierarchy, uh, a lot of bureaucracy just disappeared like snow before the sun uh, because we had to all ramp up. We had to organize remote working. We had to scale up e-com. We had to scale up omni-channel. Uh, and, and, and people started collaborating in ways that we hadn't seen really before in Al Shire, and that's still continuing today. And I think also that has, that has to stay. We should not fall back into old ways of working because uh, that, will be, uh, that will be detrimental for our service to our customers. More than helpful. Uh, last, uh, what, what are the learning from uh, Shaya in the uh, past 12 to 15 months? And what is better than before COVID? That's a question to me or to Dharma? No, for you. That's for me. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, well, to some degree, I talked about it. What is clearly better is, uh, is um, organization. I think the way we collaborate now was unthinkable 12, 18 months ago. Really unthinkable. So it's, it's, it's been a great experience. Although we've all worked uh, like dogs, I have to say, last year, uh, and, and it's taken its toll here and there. And then on top of that, uh, especially lately in India, a lot of COVID um, uh, problems. But, but amidst all of that, with people working in different locations, etc., we delivered so much stuff together with our business partners. Uh, so that has been the greatest learning and the greatest achievement, and also a very good experience as a professional to see okay. what is possible if you all unite and, and join up the teams. Uh, and that includes, by the way, uh, our solution partners, right? It's not only Al Shaya, 
Also, we've had very good collaboration with some of our key solution uh, providers uh, in, in the ecosystem around us. So, so for me, that is, when you ask me what happened in the last 12 months, that, that is the key thing to point out. Great, more than helpful. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Nabi. I think you are mute, mute. Oh, thanks for that. Yes, uh, Engineer Mohammed, thanks so much there. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Mark and uh, Mr. Taramjit, uh, insightful presentation or rather insightful chat with regards to, um, you know, the, the subject that you, you've been talking on. So yes, uh, thank, thank you so much. So we, I don't yeah. seem to have uh, any questions yet. If there is any questions at all, uh, of course, we will be sending that across to you. Uh, sure. And uh, yes, the the Hubalu platform is open for all the speakers, panelists, and uh, the delegates to meet and network till about uh, six p.m. today. So we request all of you all to, uh, you know, make use of the platform to meet your peers and also probably to have a uh, you know, quick chat. And yes, thank you so much, Engineer Mahmoud, for that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Majid. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Thank you, Ms. Laila. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Be safe and healthy. You too.